Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Tales of Policy Battles and Hilarious Hotel Drama. The second story, Fuming customer demands reservation cancellation, ends up calling cops on himself. The third story, boss abandons employee on birthday, uses company funds for wild night out, karma strikes back. The first story is, policies, what policies? I am a really lucky front desk agent, as in I'm always the one at the front desk when SH hits the fan and the rest of the room. These are two incidents that happened last week. One, a guy comes to check in with his wife. Room with two queen beds for two adults for one night. Easy. Except for the other six people in the lobby with them. Counting from adults, teenagers, and even a baby. I tell him there can only be four people in the room. He tells me it would be only him and his wife, and that those were his friend's kids, and that they would be leaving shortly. They check in and leave right away without going to the room, and come back a few hours later. Everybody with suitcases. Even the baby had a little backpack. I tell him again these people can't be in the room, and he assures me they are not staying, but they will take a quick shower and leave. I get busy with a check-in rush, and fast forward two hours later. They're still in the room. As I'm about to call their room, the guy and his wife come to the front desk asking for pizza delivery for their kids. Sure. Wait, kids? I thought they were his friend's kids. I tell them the extra people have to leave right now, or they would be charged the unauthorized guest fee. $200 and asked to leave since the law regarding this quite clear about the maximum amount of people that can be in a room. Oh boy. His wife digivolves and starts cussing me, saying I was racist, they were Latino, and that I just made up that rule and that they were calling corporate to get my A fired because I was trying to throw away her poor kids into the street. Fun fact, I'm also Latino and this has nothing to do with race, but it has everything to do with you trying to turn our small rooms into a circus clown car. I tell her she doesn't have to call corporate and that I can fix this for her. She gets really smug, probably thinking, aha, I won. Yeah, not really. I make a copy of their registration card and show her where her husband signed, agreeing to our policies, and I highlight the line where it states exactly what I just told her. She then gets all defensive and says she's late for the party and that it's not their fault because she didn't read that and that someone will come pick up their kids. I contact management and they tell me not to kick them out, as I suggested, but to still charge them. Around 2 a.m. I get a text message from the new night auditor Bless her soul, telling me the guy came to the front desk in boxers and his body all covered in sharpie doodles, asking where his room was and bragging and flirting with her, telling her how smart he was because he tricked the hotel into keeping his kids for free, and that even if they charge him, he would just do a charge back like usual. Narrator, they were charged up their A's and we have cameras all around the lobby that recorded this. A few days later we got the charge back request from him and I sent the credit card company everything to prove our case. I had fun compiling our proof. Not only he lost the chargeback, he also got fined by their company for trying to do fraud. Fun stuff. 2. A lady tries to cancel her third-party non-cancel prepaid reservation on the arrival date at 5 p.m. I tell the sex foodie a lady hell no, and she thanks me and that's that. Around 6 p.m. I'm checking the parking lot, and a huge truck pulls in. I greet them and before I can say anything I see a dog in the car. I ask them if they're staying with us and the lady tells me in a really sarcastic tone, no, duh. Of course we're checking in. Well, I'm sorry, angry lady. I didn't prepare any divination spells this morning. I point them to the front desk, assign them a parking space and remind them that we're not a pet-friendly hotel and that the dog can't stay in the room with her. She tells me the dog is not staying, but her brother is coming to pick it up. They go inside, but one guy stays behind to move the car. After the check-in, she calls the guy outside to let him know they're all ready and to tell him to come inside. He does come in with his jacket on his shoulder like a cape covering half his chest. Said jacket moving, uh-huh. A quick look at the cameras and I see him outside putting the dog in his jacket and walking to the lobby just a minute ago. Ah, uh, I catch up to them as they're opening the door to their room to remind them that we're not a pet-friendly hotel and that the pet fee is around $200 to clean the room. So if they had anything to confess, do it now and we would be all good. She tells me her sister, it was her brother before, came to pick up the dog and to stop bothering her and slam the door in my face. Okay, okay. I go back to my front desk ready to charge her, A. Eh? When another guest comes to ask me for help with directions, 
As I finish with that, the dog lady comes screaming to the front desk. As the guy runs past her with his jacket in his shoulder, jacket still wiggling, saying I was discriminating her and her dog, and that she won't stay in a hotel where her dog was not allowed, that she didn't see anything about no dogs allowed, and that she had cancer and she lost her house, and that I had to let her stay with her dog or give her money back right away. She had tried to cancel, but I wouldn't let her. Yeah, after check-in time with a no-cancel reservation, and that it was a service dog and she needed it, and she was going to sue me and blast the internet with her tail about my rudeness. So after she's finished, I asked her the two legal questions you can ask regarding service dogs. Repeat after me, class. 1. Is that a service dog? She says yes. 2. What is that dog trained to do? She says nothing. It makes her feel better and that she has the paperwork to prove it. Wrong answer, crazy lady. I tell her that's an emotional support animal and not a service dog. Under the law, they're not the same thing. And not only that I wouldn't be refunding anything because A, I had proof she took the dog inside the room, so I still have to take it out of order for deep cleaning. B, she lied to us and she got caught. C, if that was a service dog, she wouldn't have tried to sneak it in like that. At this point, the lady is full on yelling, saying how ridiculous that service dogs get special treatment but her dog doesn't, that her dog was perfectly well behaved and that I was discriminating him. I had to tell her that I was just following the law and that if she didn't lower her voice, I'd be calling the police. She then started telling a guest who was waiting to get checked in how I was harassing her, and that I was evil, and that she had cancer, and I was making her feel the cancer more, whatever that means. I apologized to the other guest, and told her to stop harassing our guests. Best part is the owner of the hotel was in the back office during this whole dumpster fire. Anytime there's an issue he loves to watch and hear, but never to get into it directly. And after she went outside to figure out what she was going to do with her life, he told me I did a good job handling the situation, and he was glad to have me to charge her, but to allow her to stay if she decides to, sans dog. I suggested to kick her out, but once again, nope. She ended up taking the dog to a dog hotel we have a couple blocks away, but it was turned down for not having its vaccines up to date. She said the dog was going to sleep in the car, and I left for the day leaving that SH show behind. The next day I got a text from the owner. The lady wrote a review basically saying how I almost killed her with my rudeness, and her poor dog was traumatized and that she was going to sue us. The owner destroyed her in his reply, and she ended up being charged $450 because they found dog food in the carpet and dog tracks in the bathroom. She also broke a few things in the room and stole a mug. At this point, I have two suggestions. Please, for the love of old gods and new one, read your registration cards and policies that you sign, people, and management should start listening a bit more when I suggest we kick someone out. But hey, their hotel, not mine. Bonus. As I was typing this, a guest called from his cell phone saying there was a suspicious Latino guy dressed in black going into our back parking lot, and he was worried about it. I asked him what he was wearing and how he looked like, but he told me he didn't see him well, just that he was a Latino and suspicious. It was me taking out the trash, so he saw enough details to figure he was Latino and suspicious but nothing else. I was probably wearing a sombrero and some maracas without noticing. Hashtag whoops. I now refuse to be called anything else but suspicious Latino from now on. I love my job, I twitch. The second story is, man was upset he had to wait five minutes for valet. Asked me to cancel his reservation, which I did. To say he didn't expect that was the least that happened. So I work the night audit shift, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. This is one of my favorite stories because the karmic justice was hilarious at the end. I deal with a bad SH amount of problems because I work at a four star luxury hotel that's also in the middle of a downtown city and connected to a convention center. I literally deal with everyone. So most of my problems usually happen right at the beginning of my shift. It's when late check-ins start finishing up, but only with the drunk and the rowdy and the occasional late flight. This man was of the drunk and rowdy nature. He was middle-aged, looked like your typical Marvel fan from the shorts, the shirt, the beard, and the glasses. Reeked of neckbeard. We all know the type. I'm a nerd too, but the kind that showers and has friends and boundaries. I don't work alone, but was alone at the front desk, 26 female, and he comes up to complain. He's checking in and stating valet wasn't there, and he's been waiting 20 minutes. I call valet and find out he's only been waiting five, and assure him they are finishing up with a couple guests and will park his car. He would not let it go. He starts going on a rant about my terrible customer service, how there has to be something I should do for him to make up for this. How completely unacceptable he had to wait at all at a luxury hotel for the valet, and thought that was the whole point of us being luxury. Clearly hasn't been to a hotel in general, never mind a nice one. I told him I talked to the valet and it's normal for people to have to wait for others who were there first, 
There was nothing I could do. It wasn't even an amount of time that I could fake being sympathetic for. He was clearly just being an A. He then keeps demanding an explanation from me as to why I was waiting, now trying to tell me I'm lying to him and they were clearly sleeping or on break. He then tells me to just cancel his reservation. I said, okay, the valet was ready for you, but if this isn't what you wanted, I'll go ahead and cancel. So I do and hand him the printed cancellation. Still won't leave. Now he's standing at the front desk staring me down and repeatedly asking me why he had to wait for valet and to admit they were sleeping. I tell him he no longer has a reservation with us and I will call security to escort him out as he is no longer a guest. He says fine, so I call security and he still won't leave. Starts yelling at them that he won't leave unless we call the cops. Man literally asked us to call the cops on him. He then looked at me and was like, you're not gonna win this, you know? Me not even knowing there was something to win here. So cops get there, they come up to me just to ask what's going on and feel bad because they know the dude is just being a D. I tell him he literally told us to call the cops to make him leave. Cops go deal with him. They tell him not only are we not reinstating his reservation, which I guess he was trying to get them to do, but he had to call an Uber home and had to abandon his car at the hotel because he was too drunk to drive. The cops literally made him call the Uber in front of them and get into it and watch him leave. So this dude clearly had some sort of power struggle thing going on, or rough SH at home. I don't know and frankly don't care. He thought he could just pick on some random hotel worker and instead got the biggest walk of shame I've seen and also had to pay for an Uber, a cancellation fee, and God knows what else to get his car back. All to just be a smug D. It was great. Now I just wish all the a-holes got a police escort. <laughs> and the last story is, it was the most effed up thing a boss has done to me. In my first job out of college, I worked at a small office run by a family. The husband and wife oversaw everything and their spoiled brat son was my direct boss. Eight months in, it was my birthday and it was on a Friday. Boss says our department should all go out to a bar and celebrate. Myself and my coworkers were excited. Problem was he didn't give the name of the bar, just the general area it was in, big bar district. The boss leaves an hour early saying he's getting ready for the party leaving myself and a coworker in the office alone. We close up and then walk to the district. We both try calling him to see where he is. He's not answering and obviously hanging up on us. Then his phone is obviously turned off. Coworker and I are like WTF. We both end up just going home. A couple weeks later, I'm inputting some sales figures in our QuickBooks and notice a transaction on my birthday. $300, Nick's Reg's birthday party. A-hole had ditched me on my birthday then use company funds to have a wild night on the town under the guise of it being my birthday. Once I found another job, I put in my two weeks notice. On the last day of work, my boss showed up for 10 minutes, didn't say a word to me and then left. Over a year of service and no goodbye, nothing. The place got sued by angry clients six months later and had to go out of business. So it all worked out. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.